please welcome the strongest the strongest creature that will be in our park for quite a while the indomitable king let's go hey guys it's sam and welcome back to jurassic world the game site h second upload in a in one in two weeks basically so this is a record breaking event this past couple of months we have a lot of things to do today because last time if you all remembered i hatched some very very important creatures for our park as you can see in the hatchery baryonyx is complete but more importantly indominus rex and triceratops gen 2 are also waiting to be hatched and in the evolution chamber of course we have tyrannosaurus rex and I accidentally activated the 100 buck incubator for Spinosaurus, but whatever, because these two should both be done as well. So let's start with this. Let's start with T-Rex, a level 20 legendary, our first of this profile. There we go, Tyrannosaurus Rex, 562 health, 215 attack at level 11. It is pretty strong. I mean, once this thing gets to level 20, I believe it is outperforming the level 20. 10 super legendary oh my days the lag is back i can't feed the creatures as fast as i would like anymore but there we go 743 health 284 attack t-rex is very very powerful i mean one of the best legendaries in the game it used to be the best before t-rex gen 2 came out did you know that at the hips the tyrannosaurus rex was 13 feet tall and that's the same height as a full-grown female giraffe it's pretty big it is pretty big. Next is Spinosaurus, one of the most famous theropods as well, alongside the T-Rex. Level 20 Spinosaurus, I mean something crazy, it's just a level 20 super rare. We have a couple of these. Spinosaurus has the exact same stats as Stegosaurus, and the reason behind this is because, I mean, <laughs> the devs got lazy. <laughs> I think that's probably the main reason. And a lot of super rares, they have the same stats. A lot of the VIP creatures also have the same stats as each other. It's just how it is. Next is our hatchery. We have completely new creatures. All of these are brand new. Baryonyx, a VIP creature with 864 health, 270 attack at level 1. We will be getting this guy up to level 10. It's going to hurt the food. We're not going to have any left when I'm done with these. There we go, so Baryonyx has eaten up 400,000 food, 1,296 health, 405 attack. This will be the best creature, except for the next one we're gonna hatch. Baryonyx means heavy claw. It got the name from its large claws on each of its forefingers. Let me just get rid of Code 19, man. The sound is definitely very annoying. And we're going to hatch our other two. Let's start with Triceratops Gen 2, the less important one. This is still a super legendary. It is fairly decent and a herbivore, which makes it very useful as well. Triceratops Gen 2, we will also feed this to level 10. There's actually no reason not to. I'm not really lacking in DNA. If I need to hatch something to complete a mission, I can do it. I don't need to be frugal with this. So that is a another super legendary creature that really increases the depth and finally the big one indominus rex who i spent a thousand bucks i mean more than a thousand definitely like a thousand two hundred and fifty bucks in that gyrosphere for one of our two please welcome the strongest the strongest creature that will be in our park for quite a while the indomitable king let's go Oh yeah, 980 health, 374 attack. I mean, dude, it's so strong. This is gonna completely throw it out of balance. All of our creature balance is gone because of this and it's gonna eat like 500,000 food. Let's get it to level 10. 1,470 health and 561 attack in Numbers Rex is without a doubt our number one creature. And the name of Indominus Rex means fierce or untamable king. I would have I would have thought it would be indomitable because that is a word that is exactly the same as its name, but apparently I'm wrong. So hi Dave. Those are some very, very good additions. Let's check out our, what our team looks like now that we have all of those. Any creature, let's see it. 
<laughs> it's so much better than it was before. We see our core, four VIP creatures here, the Indominus Rex at the front, and T-Rex not, not too far behind. It is better than the Super Legendaries, but I might consider leveling these guys up to level 20 or something later on. So far though, I'm very happy with this. This is actually more than enough. Indominus Rex actually doesn't pull out of balance too much because these guys, like the VIP creatures, they're not too far behind. As you can see, all of these three, Mastodon, Saurus, Unimorphodon, Baryonyx, have the exact same stats. So there we go, Leo being lazy. That's exactly what you would expect from them, basically. So that's great. New additions, this is perfect. Uh, we are now going to exclusively work toward these missions. Have four herbivores at level 31 or above. I've had enough of these developments. We are going to buckle down and focus on missions because that's the way I play this game. A lot of people have different ways of playing Jurassic World the game. Some people focus on creatures. I like to focus on missions because I think that is the way the devs want you to play. So there we go, 30 minutes. Uh, I'll evolve this to level 40 and we'll make a short when it gets there. And as for new things to hatch, we are going to put, let's see, I mean a rare creature is probably expected in here. I really want to make another level 40 of something. It has to be a herbivore. Because we need a level 40 herbivore. So I think I'll work towards maybe a Carithosaurus, because it's close. Or uh, I'll start with Pachycephalosaurus, because it's nice and cheap. Uh, only 590 DNA. That being said, I don't really need to save DNA, as you can see. 84,667 is not a small number of DNA. Alright, let's get our other hatchery slots filled up, shall we? 25 bucks. We'll have to put in a super legendary or something in here. Let's see what we have. Because I always forget. Uh, a couple of legendaries, but we have blue and another Indominus. Now, question is whether I should hatch it. I'm thinking no. And I'll save it for the meantime. We'll hatch blue and we will hatch a legendary. So I'm going to hatch Microposaurus in the 25 slot. And in the 50 slot, we'll put in blue. And that should suffice for new creatures. And we'll have those ready hopefully in the next video. Especially because Protego Grinders will also be ready. And that is another amphibian. We're getting pretty strong. I do say. We're getting ready to claim our spot in the high ranks in the tournaments and stuff and there we go indominus rex we get another bit on the badge beacon that's pretty sick as well yeah as i was saying uh we are about to be ready to do tournaments there is a tournament happening this weekend it's gonna start tonight at like 11 um where i where i live that's pretty exciting we are gonna play for a mega archelon which I'm not going to win, but I feel like I can probably make Do uh, make Predator League in this one. I, I have a feeling. Anyways, let's get into the battles for today. We have a few nice ones. First of all, Magus Ethereum. I always take these. I only have three. I literally have only three glacial creatures. But because they cover each other's weaknesses, we have a cave. Uh, what are these again? Mountains? Uh, they kill they kill snowy plains and snowy plains kill savannah and my strongest creatures are savannah which means that when he switches i'll just murder them all so that is pretty sick bronze ethereum very useful i mean i reckon it's probably the best one that you can hope for to start has so much attack it one shots literally everything that you can face right now and it has a decent amount of health it's not like thylacus minus pretty sick honestly in comes the Dicarus. I mean, this guy is just fodder. It is fodder. It's going to go down. Thank you for the support, by the way, on the previous video. I did not think that after like months of not uploading that I would get anything close to 500 views, let alone 1.3k, which is how many views are currently on that video. It's crazy. And I gained like, what, 20 something subs, 22 subs from that video? It's pretty sick, honestly. You guys are cooking out there, man. Honestly. And there we go. Bronze Ethereum wins it. Ah, and we get a free pack. These are so good. I'm so glad that like, these battle events are only one battle. If it was two battles, it wouldn't be possible, first of all. 
which is why I'm kind of hesitating to hatch more Cenozoic creatures because it might push it up. Anyways, Megizotherium, a bit of DNA, some bucks, very useful bucks, some food, and the super rare creature, but most exciting, 325 loyalty points, we are working our way towards the next solid gold pack, which will hopefully unlock another land creature. That is all we really want. And next up is going to unlock Maui Saurus from the What Lies Beneath event. And the fact that I have two VIP creatures in the aquatic park makes it very easy. We're going to start off with something to get foddered off. Okay, wow. There's really no reason to sort by bottom. Is there? Anyways, uh, kill Dacosaurus with Helicoprion. And Kaiwekia Dacosaurus. Okay, hold on. Prognathodon to start. He switches in. They switch in Kaakia. Orphiosaurus kills that. And then Helicoprion should sleep. I, I'm, I don't know. I feel like. I feel like I could have won in a more convincing manner. And here's two Dacosaurus. Should go for it. Oh, actually. Hold on. I messed up. Dacosaurus just. Dacosaurus just okay. If I can't kill this Dacosaurus now, it's all over for me. I can barely. Hope your source gets it done. Here's Kai work here. Has two. Has to switch. Doesn't one shot me. Okay, I have a chance basically. I'm gonna go for all reserves because Helicoprion is not at a disadvantage to Kai work here. Three. It goes for two. Okay, so one block. So I'm gonna have to go for three. And just to respect. Okay. Now I can tank one, but in the event that it doesn't block, I wanna make sure I minimize. It did block. But if it didn't, Karaoke would have had five. And if I blocked for three, I would have died. So now it has four. If it goes for four, we win. And we won. Okay. <laughs> it went a little bit bad. See, as I can. As you can see, like this is a three event, a three battle event, and I don't have enough aquatic creatures to comfortably do this three battle event, which makes it pretty difficult for me. Because I mean, like once you get past the Hanotis and the giant Orthicone, everything else is kind of weak. I have like level ten super rares up here in my top ten, and I'm I'm gonna need nine creatures to do this event, so. It's going to be a little bit of a struggle. Uh, we're going to start with Dolly. Proto Stega will come in. I need to kill that with a cave. And we can finish. I, I feel like we can finish with a nose. There's only one battle left. And I feel like Giant Orthico could probably sweep it. Unless it's all surfaces. And this battle is all surfaces. And again, a Pognathodon can two shot me. So I'm just going to... I'm going to block... <laughs> We learn from our mistakes here on the South Armac channel. Switches this time, and once again still has to give a 2 to kill. So like, literally, it would have been more beneficial if he just stayed in. As Prognathodon, as opposed to switching to Protostega. Has 2 this time. It goes for 2, so Dolly is gone. Hyneria can hopefully 2-shot Protostega, I think will, yep. Yeah. 3 reserve and everything else is up to her nurse which I believe is very capable of absolutely destroying these guys. Another reason why I'm leaving my VIP aquatic creatures at level 1 is because it makes them recharge so much quicker. So if I fail a battle, I get more opportunities in the day. You go for 2, Maui Source is going to have half, So, but in any case I'll respect and I'll go for 3 block. As I was saying, level 1 Hanotis will recharge like 3 times as fast as the level 10 and like level 10 will recharge 3 times as fast as level 20. So like the higher you level them up, the higher recharge it is going to be. So you really don't want to have like a 24 hour recharge on the one creature that is going to carry you through every single battle. Because you're not going to be able to use it twice in a day unless you use buffs, which you definitely don't want to do. And it's just, it's just not going to be very good. So there we go, 40 DNA, 2 battles done. And we have one more to unlock Maui source as well as some DNA, but loyalty points. And there we go. So as I was saying, 
Last time it was all surfaces, now it's all reefs, and it's perfect for the giant orthodon. We'll start with Dunk uh, uh, sorry, Dunkleosteus. Really? That's how you said it? Oh my god. The entire time I, I thought it was I thought it was called Dunkleosteus. Like ever since I was a kid. We'll go Prognathodon to kill Dacosaurus and we'll finish with Giant Orthocone. I mean, to be fair, Dunkleosteus can probably kill. I, ca I can't call Dunkleosteus. There's no way, I can't do it. Dunkleosteus can probably kill Dacosaurus. Yeah, there he goes. Okay, so I'll go for two now and it should die. And we've won. Because even though. Dunkleosteus might get killed by Horthiosaurus this turn with two. The, gi the giant Orthocone would just clean house. And actually, I'm just going to go for four now. Because I feel like, yeah, there we go. Only went for one block. So we've definitely won now. Dolly comes in. Is going to kill Dunkleosteus. Probably with three. I feel like he has to go for three. There we go. So only has one block. And it's all over because Prognathodon is not going to do anything. We switch into a giant author cone and because it only has one block, guaranteed death. So the event is won. There we go, victory achieved and we will get another aquatic creature. I need to hatch some of these to improve my lineup. It's actually a struggle to complete these events. I'm using up all my creatures and it's not easy. So there we go, a bit of DNA, another 100 bucks, the Marisaurus as well as, once again, 325 loyalty points i can't wait until i unlock the trade harbor because you get so many good things especially like the trades like four million coins for 800 loyalty points that you get sometimes we also have a couple of other events but i do not think these are doable for me because as you can see <laughs> it costs two million coins to participate these creatures aren't actually too bad but i feel like they get worse and especially when i was doing this um, rampage event it's just ridiculous like what is this how am I meant to win this this is three amphibians this guy is a level 40 basically level 40 VIP creature and I have to face him with all carnivores I can't even win if you give me pterosaurs even if you give me pterosaurs I would still lose all of my pterosaurs get one shot by press the even with the weakness Like every single one of my carnivores are getting one shot by Gryposuchus and Prestosuchus and some of them, most of them, by Prodigogrinus. I can't win this. <laughs> it's just not possible. So, I mean, lead me to believe that this event was made for like late game players. And even so, like on the account where I am level 81 currently, I still don't do this. I can't. Like literally, it's not possible. So anyways, to close off the day, let's do some battle stages. We're up to 45, but I've only done 42. So we can get another 4,000 DNA and an Archaeotherium. We'll do these battles really quickly. Uh, it should be super easy. And we can test out some of our new creatures maybe. This should do for the first one easily. I mean, to be honest, we didn't really even need blue. One Pajangasaurus and Mastodonosaurus is probably enough. Rajasaurus is gonna go for two. The classic strategy, I mean, this is so good. The strategy, it will last you all the way till the end of the game. We have to go for two and one reserve. And in comes Parasaurolophus, and it will, it will attack, but it can't kill Mastodon, so. And there it is, there is the win. We will get 2,250 DNA from this Mastodon, so it doesn't even get hurt. It's a little bit strong. There we go, 90 DNA, another 2,250. We're gonna get over 90,000 DNA today. Archaeotherium is next, another one of these. Um... Oh my god, I can't click. Another Cenozoic creature, but I won't really need it. As I was saying, I'm going to keep Cenozoic creatures, my Cenozoic creatures at three so far, so the battles are only one long, because it's so easy, it takes so little time. I love the Cenozoic battles on this profile. The other one, sometimes you have to fight four battles, 
I just want to do the one, and then when it starts increasing to two, then I'll then I'll hatch. But so far, it's fine. And T Rex is so strong; it can one shot Pachycephalosaurus, 426 attack on buff, and it'll stay down a level 40 Rajasaurus as well. Has more attack. T Rex will solo this fight. It doesn't even get hurt once again. I mean, this is why we evolved it, right? T-Rex level 20 is one of the most useful power spikes you get in your parks. I mean, to be, to be completely honest, it's not, it's not as good nowadays. It used to be so much better because you didn't have VIP creatures and you didn't have tournament creatures that you would get for free. So the T-Rex and the regular legendaries, getting them to level 20 was your best hope. Another 2,200 gain, this time the battle's a little bit tougher, but we'll use Indominus, because obviously, we have to use Indominus, okay? Actually, we're gonna start, we're just gonna use Indominus. We'll have Indominus and two Triceratops. Because the Indomitable King is not gonna go down to some Carithosaurus, obviously not. And we'll get to test this bad boy out on the battlefield. Um, not as excited as I should be, I feel like, but I mean, I like to keep it real. Oh my god, the 842 attack is so much. It will murder Carithosaurus, and it will probably murder the other two as well, but if it does die, then I'm kind of doomed, so we've got to try and make sure Indominus survives. Okay, it doesn't do us anything. This is actually a little bit scary. I'm going to switch in Triceratops, and I'm going to go for four reserves. And there we go, so Velociraptor is forced to go for 5, and we are comfortable now. <laughs> okay. It could have been a little bit tight, a little bit scary. If Velociraptor had 5 on next go, Indominus would have died. Would not have been pretty. So anyways, 561 attack without the buff is still super strong. And 4,000... Uh, 1,000? 1,400 uh, health is going to be able to tank up as many hits from Rajasaurus as it wants. We're gonna get a full on eight, and I'm gonna slow it down just for this. Just for this full on eight, because it's Indominus Rex, okay? This is the first legendary hybrid we will ever get on this profile. We get a full on eight. It roars, it slashes, it slashes, and it gives it your chomp, and that's 8,000 damage. That's higher than a lot of things. Indominus Rex takes the win. <clears throat> and a fun fact, do you guys know? That Indominus Rex's animation actually got changed. It used to be identical to the Spinosaurus animation. But then I suppose they realized it would be kind of weird if the franchise dinosaur wasn't at least a little bit special. So they had to change it up. So now it has a unique animation. So, I mean, I suppose that'll be it for today's episode. We did quite a lot. We got some very strong creatures. Some of the best creatures in the game. And you're going to see this guy at the top of my lineup for a while yet. At least another 10 episodes. I mean, I'm hoping it'll be more. I'm going to end the end off this episode with a couple of expansions. As much as we can do. Probably three. Maybe four? No, not four. Only three. And yeah, I mean... Once again, if you guys have enjoyed this episode, remember to like and subscribe. Oh, by the way, do you guys think I should invest in a new microphone? Right now, I'm using my phone. Before that, I was using a headset that broke. So I had to switch the phone. I think the phone was better than the headset, actually. But is the audio quality good enough? Tell me in the comments. And yeah, that's it for today's episode. I'll see you guys in future streams and videos.